everyone, it's MK. So today what I thought we would talk about are start and stop points. We talked about them in the last video as it relates to repositioning and pantographs. Today I want to look at them in a little bit different way. I want us to try to adjust them a little bit, move them, use them in correlation with the start and end crop feature, and use them so that we can create new patterns from patterns that we already have. All of those things relate to start and stop points. So I'm going to take you inside a simulation and then I'm going to meet you right back here. All right. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to build the elements of this layout from this one little sashing pattern from Christy Dillon and it's called Kalia Sash. So what we're going to do with it is we're going to repeat it in a in a pretty simple manner to make ourselves a border. We're going to adjust our start and stop points so we can do some cropping to create for ourselves a little sashing unit. And then we're going to make a new border unit, this unit right here. We're going to make that by adjusting again our start and stop points and we're going to do some duplicating and some connecting and it's all going to be based on start and stop points. So let's go ahead and let's just close our entire layout and work with our border unit. Okay, since we're working in simulator, we can just go ahead and build ourselves a border based on the size we want it to be. Okay, we don't necessarily even have to make an area. Let's just go ahead and leave it at two and a half inches high and let's begin repeating it and we'll make sure that we do point to point and we'll just repeat it the number of times until it's basically to the size that we want it and we'll call that good and we'll just baseline. Okay, nothing difficult about that. But let's go ahead and evaluate this border unit that we've created. Maybe we don't like this little stop point hanging out here in thin air. And maybe we don't like the start point kind of hanging outside of the pattern. So what we can do is we can go into quilt, new start point, and we can maybe take that start point and move it into a spot where it's not going to be so noticeable. And I think I'm going to take it all the way back to the point here, very close to that change in direction and just fine tune it. Same thing with the end point. I'm just going to fine tune it. I'm going to bring it back a little bit so it's not hanging out there into thin air. And then I'm going to go to design, crop, and we're going to do some start and crop. But first let's talk about start and end. What does this tell us? Basically it tells us that it's going to crop off anything that's ahead of our start circle. Well, we've moved our, our start circle. So what's ahead of it is the line leading into it. So that's going to get cropped off. Same with the end point. We've moved our end circle. So what's ever after our end circle is going to get cropped off. So let's go ahead and do it. And voila, there we've created for ourselves a new border unit that we can save and use in our layout. All right, let's baseline that. Now, let's think about that little sashing unit that we wanted to create. If we wanted to, we could start over and do the exact same thing that we just did and repeat it to a number of repeats that was fewer so that we could create a smaller unit. Or we could just go ahead and take this unit that we just created and we could just crop it off some more. So let's take our end point and let's move it back. And I'm just dragging along the slide bar here this time until I'm getting it back, till it's close to where I want it. Then I'm going to slow down and fine tune a little bit. And maybe I would want it right about there. Once I got it to the spot that I like, I'm just going to go ahead and crop that off. And there, again, just as easy as that, we've created for ourselves that smaller sash unit. Now let's talk about the one that we want to create that was a duplicate. What we're actually going to do is be creating a new unit based on the start and stop points and we're going to do some connecting of those. But I've adjusted my start and stop points from what they originally were. So I'm going to close this pattern that we created and I'm going to open up my master Kalia sash unit again so that I have my start and stop points in their original spots. Okay. All right, so let's let's make a new pattern out of a pattern that we already have. Let's go ahead and say that we want to repeat this. So we'll repeat it just once this time and do a point to point. And we'll baseline. And let's pretend that we want this 
uh, new unit to have only three of these little swirls and not four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this last swirl. But I want my stop point to end up basically on the same horizontal plane as my start point because I'm trying to create for myself a new point to point pattern. So I'm going to turn my grid on and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that I can see a little clearer so that when I do my cropping under quilt, new start and end, and bring my end circle in, I'm going to be able to see a little better that it's across from my start point. I went a little too far there, so I'm just going to fine tune it, and we're going to try to get it as close as we can. And I think that looks pretty good. We'll go into design, crop, and we'll crop it off, and then we'll baseline. All right, what we want to do now, I'm going to go ahead and turn the grid off. We want to go ahead and take this unit, and we want to duplicate it and rotate it and put it over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go do a, a file. Let's duplicate it. And it just kind of flew off the screen, so I'm going to do a select all and refresh. That's just a little trick for simulation. Okay, here's the one that we want to have over on the other side. So let's just select it. We can select single, select this one. Let's go ahead and rotate it as long as we've got it. Let's mirror it. Okay, now we're going to use our start and stop point and simulation to get ourselves perfectly aligned. I, if I wanted to, I could take my sim button and I could try to get this aligned over here on the point. But I want it to be a little bit more exact than that. I want it to be right on that spot. So I'm going to go ahead and select my first pattern. I'm going to go to Quilt, New Start. There it is, Quilt, New Start. And I'm going to drag my start point all the way over to the end. And then I'm going to run my simulator because that will give me a very precise position. And then I'll just stop it. Now let's go ahead and address the other unit. When this unit gets placed over there on the right-hand side, we want it to stitch through the first unit and then continue right on through the second unit. So what we actually want to do before we try and do this placement is we want to swap our start and end points. So let's go into Design, Swap Start and End, and let's just swap those. Now our machine is already into position. Our start and stops are where they need to be. So now we can just do a File, Reposition, now we're going to reposition this one that's highlighted smack dab on the start point, which is right where our crosshairs are going to be. And then we'll do a select all and refresh. All right, it looks like those two patterns are lined up pretty well. If I move my crosshairs out of the way, I can see that it's just a little bit off. So I want that fine-tuned a little bit more. So let's just go ahead and select the second one. And let's have with our nudge our nudge number on a very small distance. Let's just nudge that down just ever so slightly. Then let's do a select all. And what we're going to do right now is baseline. And we're going to hope that by baselining, we can get that start point to, to disappear. So let's try it. And voila, there we go. Now we've created for ourselves a new border unit that we can use in our layout. Again, if we don't like those start and stop points over there, we could do the exact same thing and go in and adjust them by moving it into a more pleasing place, both on the start and the end, and crop it off. All right, let's go ahead and just close this. Uh, we're not going to save that for right now. And let's just open up our beautiful Kalia layout. I'll do a select none, and I'll just get my crosshairs out of the way. So you can see in a very few number of steps, we were able to take one little sashing unit and create for ourselves a border, a sashing, and a whole new border unit just by manipulating with start and stop points. So there you go. I hope in just a few examples, you have already started to think differently about start and end points. Every pattern we have has a start and end point, but we can use them, we can move them, adjust them, use them to connect things. If you understand start and end points, you will open up a whole new world for yourself in your quilting studio. So post some things online, let me know how you liked this video, and until next time everybody, from my studio to yours, happy quilting. Bye-bye.